drive in Singapore. And if you don't know, I tell you that the spec of the Gucci is an Italian brand from my hometown, so I'm quite acquainted with their range and prices. Okay? Like for the shoes, a lot of shoes are made in my hometown, so I'm quite acquainted with the prices. And then there are geography. What we will see is that the price difference goes in, in a very intuitive direction. Demands that are less elastic are charged the bigger price. So in this case, Singapore. What could affect the ability of Gucci to effectively charging different prices for the same bag? Here and in Italy, what could be an impediment for this charging for Gucci? Travel. You travel, you buy, and you come back. If you buy a lot, the amount you save can allow you to pay for the plane ticket, for example. So if you, if you monitor the news, for example, you read of these Singaporean tourists who were stolen merchandise they bought in Italy for 15,000 Singapore dollars. So clearly they were spending a lot in this luxury item. Or you can read of that Instagrammer who was selling fashion bags through Instagram in Singapore by buying them in Italy. And what was the problem with this Instagrammer? She was not declaring a custom in Singapore, so she was evading taxes. So I don't know how the people at the airport got the Hey, this lady's landing, look at the Instagram, they stopped there. The, you, you don't remember this? This is all in the news. I want to tell you what's in the street. Now. So they drove her to her house. They went to the house and they found that the, she had a room full of these, so I don't know how much they could pay, in fines. But this again is an attempt to do arbitrage. I travel, I buy, I resell. The latest scammers, the one that were hiding in Johor, right? of all the places you hide yourself in Johor. You run away from Singapore, you're hiding in Johor, JD. <laughs> Go, caught them right away. Yeah. 32 million, so much. Yeah. They were doing the same. They say, look, we travel, we can buy these luxury items that here are sold at an exorbitant price with a little And so on and so forth. So if this happens on a smaller scale, the tourists, which is not affected. But if this can be done at a bigger scale, then clearly this uh, basically uh, jeopardizes the ability to price discriminate. So the fact that having the same products in different markets at two different prices creates this, a, a finance guy will call it arbitrage opportunity, buy low, sell high. Huh? So as long as this cannot be done at the macro level, you can price discriminate. There are ways, there are instead scenarios where this cannot be done. You cannot arbitrage. Student discount. Yes? You have to have some, you have to have, so we look at the monopoly test, how you say, the extreme case. You need to have some market power, right? Because you are setting the price. So there must be some, some uh, market power. Which, which again goes back to what, what, what I was telling you earlier. The power of brand recognition. Brand recognition gives you market power. As long as people think that the Gucci bag is better than any and most of the other bags, Gucci has the, the ability to control the, the price of the bag. So if you think that Gucci bag is like any other bag, leather bag, that's it, perfect substitute. Like, uh, for many years, I observed this, the Giordano shop and the other one, HT or TH? What's the name? Chinese name. Don't know? It's either HT or TH, I remember the acronym. Because they were next to each other, or one on top of the other. And then you look at the windows, the same shirt. 999, 999. 
11.99 here. Okay, so as long as I perceive them as indistinguishable, all the price cannot vary that much. In fact, they were sitting next to each other. Valerie, you know the place. Tell me, what's the name? <laughs> you know Giordano? Italian name, but it's from Hong Kong. And, uh, they sell tissues. Eh? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> HD, right? <laughs> HD. Okay. What the same. Why are you laughing? I mean, because HD was on luxury brands. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, so is it Jordan is luxury? <laughs> now they, they, they came out with the Singapore uh, polo shirt range, and they're like, all the Gideon brand, all the Gideon brand. Uh, if it rains. Giordano or HD? Anyway, so they were next to each other. So very little market power. It's that brandy or like that. Why you Gucci? Wow, wow, right? Stop. You can control the price. So as I said, there are cases where you can segment the market based on the elasticity. Students versus no students. Students. <coughs> On average, without looking at each particular student, but on the average, if I take a student at random, I know that his ability to spend or her ability to spend is less than if I take a worker at random. <clears throat> this makes that they're much more, and students have more time than all students. So these two factors together make their demand more elastic. Okay, I can, I can basically cheap on this by attaching special discounts to students how you show me your ID. So here the arbitrage is minimal, unless you say I go to buy food for my dad, I show the ID, and bring it to the table of my dad. But again, at the macro level, it doesn't look something that can be uh, generating issues. So you get the student discount, the silver card is another example. You stop working, your income drops, you become much, you have more time, again, your demand is more elastic. Discount, silver card. Sometimes gender can be used. Okay? Ladies' night. It's still existing? Does it exist? Is it Wednesday? So on Wednesday, you go out, you go to bars and whatever, girls don't pay the cover fee, boys do. So it's up to you. If you want to dress like a woman, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay the fee and you enter. Then, okay? Or otherwise, I still don't understand why. Oh, maybe because uh, I don't know why they do that. So, Women are, are, are less elastic demand. I don't know. Okay, in Italy, remember, a place did the same for drinks. So not only girls were not paying the cover fee and boys could, but then the gay girls could drink for free. That scheme lasted two weeks. Because then the, the girls were the only one ordering drinks, but they were not the only one drinking them. Okay, arbitrage. You go, you order the drink, then either it's your friend who gives it for free, or maybe you say, oh, the drink is $10, I give you for $3, stop. Okay? Okay, the company discovered that women, willingness to pay for microwave, was bigger than men. Okay? So there were, that demand was less elastic than men. Now, you cannot say, unlike the ladies' night, where there is a barrier to entry, oh, uh, you, are, you are a man, you're a girl. I don't know, today's ladies can be more difficult, but more less, you can tell. <laughs> I'm gonna put microwave, ladies, 120, boys, 80. Have you ever seen that? No, right? I don't even know if it's legal. Probably it's not even legal. So what do they do? Versioning. I make different models of microwave. This is the idea that the people are willing to pay more for, for the microwave. We go for the one with more options. 
see others who go for the one for fewer option. And, and this is called versioning. And we have versioning everywhere, right? You buy a car, and then you can decide well, how much you want to have it pimped. They give you out of the of the of the retailer, which is four wheels, an engine, steering wheel, and a cover. They say, no, I don't like this. I want to add this feature. The airline industry has discovered the same. Now even, even companies that are not considered low cost may decide to charge you if you want to choose your seat and the like. So these are ways in which you take a good that you are selling and you break it apart. Or you make different versions of it. So people are willing to pay more. Uh, we pay more, we have to pay less. Pay less. We pay less, this allows you to sell to more people. Okay? The example I gave you are all about market segmentation, which is normally called third degree. Other kind of, of price discrimination is when you do quantity discount. The more you buy, the less you pay on average. We will see how this is achieved. And instead, the, the benchmark for price discrimination is what is called First degree. First degree means everybody is charged their way to pay up. If I can find a way to learn how much I need to pay for an object, I will charge you that price. <coughs> so for many years, this was kind of a benchmark. But now I, I, I started to see that there are companies that they claim that by studying online behaviors of people, I guess they follow the IP address, or, or maybe they have you download an app from your phone, and this app discovers most of the things you do. That information is sold to this company. Now they will sell this this phone number. We is willing to pay two thousand dollars to fly to Italy, eight hundred dollars for a pair of shoes, and the like. Now they sell this information. So then there is there are these companies that say we can do that. We can sell this information, so you know how to fly. The people who answer the identify them. Okay, so that would be first degree price discrimination. I think what what going to follow we see how in how many ways you can do this. Okay, I told you about damaged goods. What are damaged goods? Damaged goods, for example, now you think we, we normally tend to believe that the more expensive version of a product is also the more costly to make. Would it be more expensive to make a printer that prints 10 pages per minute or a printer that, or the same printer that prints one page per minute? Oh, right, the, the, the first one, right? More performing. No. What, what it was discovered is that the company do the 10 pages per minute printer as the default. Then they put a chip that slows down, like a handbrake there is a printer and so now the one that is lower costs more of course marginally more and this trick is done precisely so that now I have two printers of different performance targeting two type of buyers I can sell them both at the different prices the margin the change in price is negligible and in fact they virtually selling the same goods at different prices DVD, I know it's an old, uh, an old technology now, DVDs, right? You buy the one for your region, or you buy the one that, that can play every DVD in the world. You know that there are different uh, system or codes according to where you live. Exactly. Now you know, I, I, I'm not up to date with the technology, but when I bought my player and I was in the US, I had to choose, do I want to buy the one that can read, or also because there are different TV systems. But I think also that there was a, something that says, this player can only play DVDs with the code USA, area code USA. This one can only play DVD with the area code Japan. And this one can play any DVD. So if you buy this player, then you have no problem. Whatever your source for DVDs is in the world, you can play. Of course, which one was more expensive? The universal one. 
and the common man on the street would have thought, hey, the universal one is, is the most expensive to make because it has to be compatible with the system. Not again. As one of his gigs discovered that one, by opening the remote controller of this DVD, there was a button there that was hidden by the cover. So this button allowed him to basically set the DVD player he bought, that was working, let's say, for the years only, to any country you want, any region. So all the DVDs were basically universal by default, all the DVD players. Then I say, this ships to the US, let's tune it to years only and hide the feature. Hmm? Yes? Isn't this like considered rent seeking behavior? They're not actually creating any benefit, they're just making No, you are, you, are, you are extracting surplus, consumer surplus. You are willing to pay $200 for a pair of shoes. If I sell at one price, I can basically sell, let's say, 80. You walk away with $120 surplus. Can I find a way to get that money? That's the question. Okay. If I can do this for every single person in the room, first degree price discrimination. Because everyone is going to be charged the maximum they will be paid. If not, I can divide in groups, boys and girls, students, not only our students. Okay? But again, in some cases, you have to be careful because boys and girls doesn't always work. You cannot post a price if you are a price. But I could do another way to, to sort of get to first degree, as we will see, is membership. Club membership. You pay a membership fee and you have access to our services for free or at a certain price. You don't, you don't pay the fee, you may still have access by a limited price. Okay. Or I may decide not to include that. So I gave the example of the boundary. Bundling is another case. We bundle things together. Set deals. Okay, so we will see. This is, again, there is uh, it's no point in me listing all the cases. Because then I spend a week listing. So we will look at different examples and we will build from there. Okay? Questions? Okay, no problem. Okay, no problem.